And I was lucky enough to interview this guy quite regularly uh, when he was manager of Newcastle United, but he played a fair few times before that. He's a very special guest and needs no introduction, but put your hands together anyway. Mr. Glenn Roder is our guest today. Nice to hear you held in very high regard because I think digging beneath the surface, this is a football club in an area that still lives long in your heart, I think, isn't it, Glenn? I think it is in long in the heart of anyone who played there. Um, someone on the table said it's a great club. From there. I said no. Well, it is a great club. I said it's a sad club. You've got to give me a chance to explain myself. It's sad because there's so many countries: Brazil, Argentina, Italy, France, Spain. Football is, is their life too. But I can't see there's any club in any of those countries that hasn't won a trophy since your man over there, Bobby Moncler. I, oh, I did win the uh, Intertoto, that was on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> I know they would still expect to get 50,000 to come to the home games. And that's all credit to you guys and ladies. So uh, give yourself a uh, round of applause. Yeah, <laughs> You got a taste of it as a player though, and close to 200 appearances, and you were involved at a great time with some fantastic guys. It says 199 in the record, by the week, and it's 201. <laughs> <laughs> and some fantastic names you played alongside as well. Yeah, absolutely. And who knows, my last appearance was at Old Trafford, what number shirt I wore in my last game. Any guesses? Six. Five, nine. Oh, this guy thinks he's clever by going through the exact number one, number one from 0 to 99. Number one, yeah. Go on, put us out of misery. 48. Number nine, ladies and gents. Yeah, you're right, John. He wasn't the best number nine his club's ever had. <laughs> but your first game as a manager was quite an eventful time for, for that, that, that certain number nine as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a very special game. It, you know, when you're asked to... Um, be a caretaker. Previous manager uh, lost his job, which was Graham Sudness. I think the team and the lads had lost to Man City badly on, on it was a Wednesday night. So, because I had managed before, um, I was asked um, by Freddie Shepherd, would I take the game on Saturday at home to Portsmouth? And there's a couple of factors that were important to me. Harry Redknapp, who then lived up at West Ham, was the manager. Alan Shearer was, if he scored one more goal, um, broke the goal scoring record here. And had we not won, we'd have been just two or three points off of the bottom three, where if we did win, because Paul was were below us, we sort of kicked away a little bit on, on the three points. <coughs> And it all um, all panned out well. It's a hat trick, really. And as it happens, we ended up with a seventh place finish that season. Yeah. It was um, well, and also it's a fact that uh, there was someone working here at the time that was on my side, and every time he could find a a stat that he knew that I would like. He, um, he showed me the league table from when I took over from Graham. Had ridiculously, had the league started then, would have been third in the uh, Premiership. So it got to, it got to a good start. Is there one game that lives in your memory, either as a player or a manager, one particular moment that you'll, you'll cherish forever? Well, there's two actually, and the pictures are both on my office wall at home. One is on. Um, uh, reaching forward to nick the ball over John Lynch, we beat Arsenal 1-0. Kenny Sampson, I don't know what Kenny was doing, he was sort of near but not near enough to get a block. And another one, uh, we beat Man United by nil but I scored a header that day. And there's uh, Kevin Moran, Steve Bruce in the picture, <laughs> arguing who should have been picking me up. <laughs> Sorry, I said that argument yeah. downstairs. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm right in thinking you are still the only English manager to have a seventh place finish or finish as high with two different Premier League clubs. Yeah. Again, allegedly. Um, and, also, and also, I wasn't here long enough really, but 
the percentage you'll win is on 40%, which is only behind Sir Bobby Robson and Kevin Keegan, which I can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's some people that's really serious names and that and the polling records here. You've got a bit of an affinity with Norwich as well, obviously. They'll be coming here today, and on paper, the expectation is that we win this game, but things happen when you're strapping for your lives, and that's exactly what they do. The affinity is quite the trust me. Oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really, some jobs I didn't really enjoy. So, um, you're, you're hoping, hoping we spank these today, are you? Sorry? You're hoping we spank these today? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Bobby, uh, Bobby called me in October and said we'd have come up and, um, and do one of these days uh, due to own fixture. So I went through the fixture list and said I thought, yeah, we can win a game. Ooh. Come on then, give us your score prediction, Glenn. We're not allowed to bet, you know that. Oh, wait, have you got a prediction that these, these guys can bet with? Well, I actually think it will be end to end, uh -huh. and as always, it's like the team who wins the Premiership will have the best defensive record. If whoever defends better today will win, win the game. But I can't see them either team not scoring, so I think it was you know a good chance of it being an entertaining game with uh, goals at both ends and. Black and white scoring one or two more than the Canaries. Uh, That's what we like to hear. Still the Canaries, then. Still the Canaries. Don't forget, ladies and gents, you get gold card on your table. Time of the first goal, minutes and seconds, you walk away with quite a nice prize. But it's a delight to take this fella around the sweets. Please, one more time, put your hands together. Mr. Glenn Roder. Thank you.